Hey, good afternoon. Uh, let us start with uh, the lecture number two in uh, fifth module. This is actually lecture 26 in uh, the series of ad hoc uh, and sensor networks. So yesterday we had started module number five. The module number five is actually on uh, hybrid wireless networks. Hybrid wireless networks is actually the cumulative effect of uh, infrastructure based and infrastructure less networks. So yesterday's lectures have been uploaded. You can just check. We had uh, uh, quite uh, a detailed discussion about what is uh, hybrid wireless networks, what are its features, and uh, what is meant by next generation uh, hybrid wireless networks. So uh, there were the first type, which is called as MCN, uh, was discussed yesterday. We had found that some properties of cellular network is there in MCN. Some properties of ad hoc network is there in MCN. Cellular means mobile phone network, what we mean here. Uh, some part of MCN discussion was pending, so that we will uh, finish today. Uh, and two more new types of uh, networks, that is hybrid wireless architecture, that is HWN and Soprano. These two we will see today. So main target is to finish these three architectures. So around two slides are there for every architecture. So let us start with uh, the first type. Uh, but before that, uh, let us just have a look at the syllabus. <clears throat> so introduction, feature, evolution, classification, of hybrid wireless network was done yesterday. Then I told you next generation hybrid wireless architecture, MCN, it was also partially done. Some part of it we will do today. And then HWN, which is uh, called as hybrid wireless network, uh, and then Soprano, these two architectures will be done. And if time permits, we will see what are the open issues in next generation hybrid architecture. Open issue means these are the issues that are to be solved. Uh, there is no typical solution found for these issues. So they are still pending. One very important issue you can understand is the issue of energy. So we'll be seeing all this uh, in this lecture. So let us start with the first type of uh, next generation hybrid, hybrid wireless network that is MCN. The full form is multi-hop cellular uh, network architecture. So M for multi-hop, C stands for cellular, and N stands for network. And there's the architecture we are proposing. So architecture you can see here. And uh, there are two types of links mainly. One is the dashed line, which is called as the control channel. That means whichever signals are shown by dashed line. So you can check between the node A and between BS. BS stands for base station. So I told you that this hybrid wireless networks are actually a mixture of infrastructure based system and infrastructure less system that's why it is called hybrid whenever i'm saying infrastructure based system this is having a base station in it so this is that base station centralized base station which is kept at the center of the circle so this is the bigger circle is a cell which i have not shown completely but almost i have shown it so this bigger circle is the cell okay which is controlled by this base station and within that there are small mh so MH stands for uh, mobile host. Okay. So MH stands for mobile host. Not always that they are mobile phones. They can be a sensor node also. So there are many mobile hosts. You can check here. So all these MH are shown here. And each MH is having. So this is the thing which was not explained yesterday. So they said that MCN is a novel architecture uh, where connection between source and destination is established over a multi-hop path. That means if A wants to talk to B, so first A to C one hop, C to D another hop, D to B another hop. So by three hops, as we have found in case of ad hoc, uh, the connection between node A and node B can be established. So this is one type of uh, connectivity, which is an ad hoc type of connectivity. But this node A, if you wants to talk to this MH node, then what happens? So one thing is, uh, a and B, they are quite close. They are at same side of uh, the base station. Okay. So there are two types of communication. One type of communication is between the nodes itself, between the ad hoc node itself. So A to D, A to B connection through C and D is uh, the ad hoc type of connection. That is, uh, there is no base station involved in this connection. Whenever A is sending data to C, C is sending to D and D is sending to B. 
so this is a ad hoc uh, communication but if a wants to send data to this image it can have any name it can have name as g or h something if this a wants to send data to this h which is far off then this kind of connection will not happen because let's assume the intermediate all these nodes are not there then what happens then a sends data to bs and bs sends data to mh so this is actually one type of connection where the connection is happening through base station that is a to base station and base station to mh this mh might be having name of g so this is actually infrastructure based type of communication where the base station is involved and second type of communication is a to b through c and d here base station is not involved so this is a ad hoc type of connectivity so both this kind of connectivity is found in case of this mcn architecture where a to base station to mh happens because mh and a they are quite far off so this is called a infrastructure based communication and if a and b are quite close by then a to c c to d and d to b communication happens there we are not involving base station in between this is called ad hoc type of communication so this is actually a multi hop cellular network architecture where transmitter and receiver gets connected in two ways either by uh, cellular mode or by ad hoc mode in next hwn also we will find the same thing okay but here there are some little bit small mathematics involved that is transmission range of this base station is capital r that means that a capital r is nothing but the radius of this bigger circle okay so if the base station wants that one uh, mobile host is there at far corner at this point this base station can directly uh, communicate with that uh, mobile host mh because this base station is having abundant amount of power there is no power shortage in this base station because it is connected to electricity supply okay. because there is a base station with huge memory huge power supply and all the positives okay. so if it wants it can directly connect with the mobile host which is there at the far off corner so that uh, communication distance is capital r but these are the small nodes these nodes are having a smaller communication distance which is called as communication distance for data channel which is called given by small r and small r is given by capital r by k where 1 by k is a attenuation constant what is 1 by k it is said that here the transmission power of the mobile hosts and the base station over channel r is reduced to a fraction 1 by k that means if this base station can communicate for range capital r in that case the small mobile hosts are having communication range of capital r by k which is smaller than capital r and this 1 by k is decided by us okay how much we want this mobile host node to communicate the distance okay that we can decide so if k value is kept high at that time the small r value will be lesser and lesser so the small k and small r they are inversely proportional this thing we have to understand so if you don't want this mobile host to communicate for a bigger range if we don't want this mobile host to communicate for a bigger range then we will be keeping k value high k value high means r by k value will be less okay so this is the control which is there in our hand you can check this a node is having communication range of small r c node is having communication range of small r d b all these nodes are having communication range of small r and small r is equal to capital r by k the capital r is the communication range of the base station or radius of this overall circle so this is a part which i meant forgot to mention yesterday so k is called as reuse factor why k is called as reuse factor because uh, if we are keeping the value of k as very big in that case this uh, node communication range is getting reduced okay if this node communication get range is getting reduced that means we will have to deploy more number of uh, mobile hosts within this bigger circle to uh, sense the whole area okay so that's why uh, more will be the value of small k a okay. more amount of sensor nodes or mh or mobile host we will require to cover the whole area for sensing purpose 
so it is a few things are said that uh, in this mcn the architecture where connection between source and destination is established over a multi hop path you can check a c d b multi hop path it provides realistic architecture for unicast routing protocol for best effort and real time traffic unicast means one sender to one receiver here the transmission power of the mobile hosts mh and the base station over data channel r is reduced to a fraction 1 by k but k is the use factor so r is reduced to capital r is reduced to small r and small r is equal to capital r by k more than one node can transmit simultaneously over same channel node density expected in mcn is fairly high this is a very important line that more than one node can transmit simultaneously over the same channel what happens is when a is communicating with b okay and this communication does not happen simultaneously if a wants to communicate to b initially it doesn't know where b is but a is having a message for b so what is the uh, whole process a first ask base station that i want to transmit a message to b but i don't know where b is b is being the uh, overall controller of the whole uh, circle so b is knows position of every node so b is receives this control request from a and b is knows where exactly b is b is sends a reply message to a telling that b is there in your side b is close to you in that case a understands that to communicate to b a will not have to take the help of bs unlike if a wants to talk to this mh a has to take the help of bs so in that case bs acts as a relay node if a wants to talk to mh but if a wants to talk to b in that case it gets intimation from bs that uh, bs should not be involved in communication between a to b then what happens a sends a request so what request it is called as route request packet a sends a route request packet it is received by c c forwards it to d d forwards it to b again they are uh, giving back the acknowledgement so a understands where b is in that case a sends a data packet to b through a c d and b and again b sends back the uh, acknowledgement for the data packet so this is how the communication goes on so what is this link so in the previous slide what is this link between a and bs this a and bs link is called as a control channel link so this link is there just a asks b that i want to send the uh, data to b but i don't know where b is and this bs tells a that b is there in your site you just find out where is b and send the data packet so there is no data packet over this communication channel so in this communication channel whatever you find there is no data here whatever data a wants to send to b that data is not here that data is present over this uh, a c d b channel okay so this is what is called as multi hop cellular architecture so here the chances of network partition within the cell is very less that means uh, it never happens that a totally gets disconnected with bs because a c d b all the mobile hosts are within the capital r distance from the base station okay so they are densely deployed and all the sensors are within the uh, capital r radius hence uh, it will never happen that this a c d b or a to b s they will get disconnected and a partition will be created in the network partition means one point in the network cannot uh, within the cell cannot communicate to another uh, node within the cell in that case we call it partition okay but due to all this criteria that is smaller is equal to capital r by k and number of node deployed in this is node dense node density expected in mcn is fairly high that means quite large number of nodes are deployed within this circle due to all this reasons partition uh, within the cell it uh, is not uh, happening in case of mcn so chances of partition is very less average path length that is number of hops that means how many hops between transmitter to receiver between source and destination increases linearly with k so if you are increasing the value of k if you are increasing the value of k at that time r by k is uh, reducing in that case the uh, average path length is increasing 
okay between so two destination so as r is becoming smaller how smaller is becoming smaller if k is increasing if k is increasing in that case small r is reducing if small r is reducing number of hops required will be increased because in that case every sensor node will be having smaller communication range okay. so that is what it is said average path length number of hops between the source to the destination increases linearly with k that means if k is increasing small r is decreasing number of hops between sender to the receiver will increase because in that case every smaller node is having lesser uh, communication distance okay. and simultaneously the transmission possibility increases as k square okay the network throughput increases so the output of the network increases linearly with k that means if we are increasing the value of k and uh, reducing the power of uh, transmission for every uh, mobile host in that case uh, every node will be transmitting for a for a smaller distance in that case what will happen is the overall network output will increase because number of nodes uh, who are carrying the data will increase in that time so the actual gain is little less due to all the overhead of the routing protocol yes if you are increasing the value of a k in that case every node a uh, communication distance will reduce that means every node uh, will be transmitting for a smaller distance that means from a to b here there are four hops maybe if i am increasing the k value further there will be eight hops between a to b and as the hop count is increasing in that case uh, the control overhead or the rts cts control packet exchange will increase so that is what they are saying all the mhs uh, the actual gain is little less due to the overhead of the routing protocol so if you are increasing the value of k at the time the uh, uh, control packet is going to be increased so all mobile hosts uh, take part in the topology discovery wherein each uh, mobile host regularly sends to the base station the information about the beacon power received from its receiver node so every node is having a special relationship with base station okay and every node is connected to base station and this is called station keeping where the node is suppose c node is moving c node is having high mobility it is coming towards this periphery of this bigger circle that might happen okay c node is coming closer to this uh, periphery then also the c node will be keeping it in touch with bs because every any other node wants to send information to c that uh, information will be conducted to c through bs okay so that's what it is saying that all the mhs Uh, take part in topology discovery wherein image regularly that means all the mobile hosts regularly send to the base station the information about the beacon power received from its neighbor that is where the node is every node is keeping in touch with base station and every node is giving its whereabouts to the base station so this information is used by base station to estimate distance between uh, two different images so c is telling bs that i am here a is telling bs that i am here so from this two uh, information uh, bs will find out what is the relative distance between a and c so every word in this paragraphs are important please go through here also i told you so transmission range uh, is uh, r by 2 and data channel is actually uh, smaller by 2 and uh, this is the process so initially that same thing a requests base station that where b is b tells a that Uh, sorry bs tells uh, a that b is towards your right or bs is towards your side then a sends a, uh, a route uh, request packet that actually forwarded to c and d and it goes to b then d sends a route reply it comes back to a then uh, through dijkstra the shortest path between a to b is calculated and then uh, there is some concept called as route cache so whenever a is transmitting data to b the ac db path is stored in the route cache so all these things were explained so this slide was explained in detail yesterday that you check but the previous slide i missed few points what is k what is significance of k all these things i did not explain yesterday so this is about uh, multi hop cellular network if you are asked you draw only this one diagram and tell what is the dashed line this is a control packet which is between a to bs and what is a solid line so solid line is the data packet line so ac db is the solid line so this diagram you have to draw and you have to uh, explain what is the mcn architecture 
next uh, is coming uh, this is called second type of uh, next generation architecture which is called as hybrid wireless network architecture and it is a multi hop cellular architecture multi hop means uh, two three hops it will take to reach to the destination from source to destination so this architecture operates in uh, two modes one is ad hoc mode another is cellular mode so this diagram is for ad hoc uh, cellular mode okay and next page we will see the diagram for ad hoc mode in cellular mode the nodes sends packet to the base station so suppose a wants to talk to c so what is base station base station is there at the center this is the cell this is a circular cell and base station is the controlling part so if you consider this circle as a college this base station is the principal so everything happens through this principal there is nothing happens which uh, will not be known to the principal and what is the reach of the principal check that this base station is having reach up to the radius which is given by capital r so every point in the uh, circle is reached by this base station so base station can take care or can sense every point within this a uh, circle with radius capital r so first we are explaining what is meant by cellular mode in hwn that is hybrid wireless network architecture here the nodes sends packets to bs so a wants to send packet to c that is not happening directly as was in the previous case okay a is now sending packet to base station and figure shows the operation of hwn in a cellular mode where node a sends its packet to bs and then bs forwards them to the destination node c that's all this is actually what is called as uh, the cellular mode of hwn so this transmission range of every node is r so every node a node b node c node every node or mobile hosts they are having transmission range of capital r bs is also having capital range of small r Oh, sorry capital r so the transmission range of every node is capital r uh, which is nothing but the radius of the cell so cellular mode is better suited to sparse topologies so in topologies where the number of sensors are not much okay number of sensors are not dense not very dense that means uh, less number of mobile hosts less number of uh, sender receiver nodes are there within the circle for those kind of network uh, hybrid wireless network cellular mode is used okay so what happens in this case a wants to send data to c though c is very close to a but a doesn't know that okay so a is not taking responsibility so data here it is written data is sent from a to bs and bs has to relay so bs is nothing but working as a reflector bs is working as a relay okay and b is bs is having radius of capital r what bs will do bs will take the data from a uh, and bs will forward the data to c okay. so bs is acting as a uh, relay station this is exactly what happens in case of our mobile phone or cellular phone tower okay. but second thing uh, second diagram is more complicated this is actually called as ad hoc uh, mode of hybrid wireless network what is this this is actually using a dynamic source routing protocol dynamic source routing means uh, the routing is not fixed okay in the previous case routing is fixed any node wants to talk to another node the sender node has to send the data to base station and base station will forward the data to the destination in case of uh, ad hoc mode uh, it is actually dynamic source routing what is dynamic source routing it is used to discover the route so suppose a wants to send the data to d what will happen a will flood uh, the whole area whole circle with request okay so here there are two types of uh, thing one is the dotted lines okay so dotted line you can see it is going from a to b b to c and c to d if the diagrams are not prominent whenever i am uploading uh, the ppt you just check or you can check in your book that is the a to b b to c c to d they are kind of dotted line and that is nothing but the uh, route request for data that is a is saying that i want to send data to d i want a path okay so it is going in other uh, node also but a wants to send data to d so that's why b c d this is a relevant path so node transmission range r okay here a to b distances are b to c distances are c to d distances are okay there is small r you can check here okay so all this mobile host they are having transmission range of small r but in the previous case every node was having 
uh, range of communication range of capital R. So this is the dif difference between uh, cellular mode and ad hoc mode. So though I have written cellular mode in number two, but first I have explained cellular mode and then I have explained ad hoc mode. Please check. Okay. So in the cellular mode, every node was having a communication range of capital R, which was big. In case of ad hoc mode, every node is having communication range of small r. And we have seen in case of MCN that small r is equal to capital R by K, where K is called as a reuse factor. Reuse factor, why reuse factor? Because here, this uh, mobile uh, host wants to talk to this one who are within the range of R. So this can send the uh, data here. At the same time, this A wants to send the data to D. Okay, so A is sending the request, D is sending the reply, and then A is sending data. So same frequency, you have heard of frequency reuse within one cell, the same communication frequency can be reused. If this communication by this mobile host, this one, this mobile host and this communication by ABCD mobile host, they are not getting interfered with each other. Okay, then same frequency or uh, communication frequency ABCD and same communication frequency between two mobile hosts are possible. So they are, these two mobile hosts are creating a pair. Why is it happening? Why is it possible? Because the communication range of uh, between this mobile host are very small. That means whatever frequency this mobile host is sending, that is going for a very smaller distance, only up to this. And whatever data this upper mobile host is sending, that will also be communicated for a smaller distance, small r, okay, within this. So these two prepares a cell within a cell. Okay, This ABCD is preparing or producing a cell within a cell. Likewise, so that's why the small r is equal to capital R by k, and k is called as a reuse factor. No transmission rate smaller is chosen by the base station such that all nodes can reach one another without any partitions. So each node will be reaching each other, but there should not be any partition within the network. In this mode, A, that is A node, uses a BSR protocol, dynamic source routing protocol, to discover the route for the destination D. So A floods. A node floods route request packets, which reaches to B through C uh, through D. Uh, so A route request reaches to D through B and C. This is written here. Node D now sends a route reply packet. So up, upon receiving the uh, route request and data, then a route reply packet is sent by the line which is shown below, which is a dash dot dash dot line, okay, which is flowing from right to the left. Okay. So this route reply uh, is coming from D, C, B, A path. And a route request is going from A, B, C, D path. Okay, so all these paths are having maximum uh, distance coverage of small r, where small r is called as a kind of ad hoc uh, communication radius. So a flood uh, route request packet which reach the D after being uh, relayed by node B and C. Node D now sends a route reply packet which reaches the node A. A then sends packet. So upon receiving the uh, route uh, reply packet, then the A node sends the data over the same channel. So initially, A directly does not send data. A first sends the route request. That A says that I don't know where is the uh, route. What is the difference between MCN and HWN is previously A was asking BS about the position of uh, the destination. In this case, A does not send any request to BS. A tries to find out by flooding uh, route request and data. A uh, tries to find out uh, where the position of D node is. Okay, It is not taking any help from BS to find out D. So there's a difference between MCN and HWN. Okay. So uh, what is saying that? Uh, so node D now sends a route reply packet, which is just A. A then sends packet along with. So the path through which route request was sent through the same path that is ABCD, the data is also being sent from A to D, okay. uh, which does not involve in the base station. So BS does not use, uh, used, BS is not at all used by the routes here. So ABCD communication, DCBA communication is not involving uh, the base station. This is the greatness of this hybrid wireless network. This mode works well for dense topologies. That means previous one, uh, MCN, you had seen, you had seen this is for sparse topology, this is for dense topology. Whenever uh, the number of uh, mobile hosts within the cell is too much, there we can use multi-hop cellular network. This ad hoc is for 
sparse topology that means where the number of mobile hosts within the cell is not much that means less number of sensor nodes are there within the uh, cell there uh, we are using uh, the hybrid wireless network in cellular mode and whenever the number of nodes within the uh, cell is too much that is dense there we can use uh, this hybrid wireless network in ad hoc mode so there is a second type it is said that's ad hoc mode of hwn operation previous page is called cellular mode of hwn operation so it is said that uh, bs is not used here for routing the mode works well for dense topologies in the ad in the ad hoc mode partitions are avoided because a number of nodes are too much here whenever the number of nodes are too much their communication range is small so r is very small here in that case all nodes are connected to the other nodes so partition chance of partition is very less in this case that is the ad hoc mode of hwn here the base station periodically check the topology and broadcasting the minimum power required to keep the network connected so this bs uh, bs being a principle of the college but bs is ignored by all the nodes because all the nodes have become now sufficient self sufficient that is they are telling the base station that we don't need your help for communication this is a great uh, network topology okay though base station is there in case of crisis base station will uh, uh, relay the message from the sender to the receiver but the abcd nodes all the other uh, mobile hosts are trained in such a good way that they are not using base station anywhere so this is a very classic case uh, of ad hoc network which is called also called a distributed network okay so here but base station does one thing base station does one thing and that is very important what what is that base station keeps track of which node is going in which direction because all the mobile hosts abcd they are all mobile hosts they are all moving not mobile phone huh? it is mobile host that means they are all sen sensor nodes with some kind of mobility okay base station keeps track that that how fast a is moving in which direction where b is going in which direction c is moving and how much it is moving and at every instant bs can calculate if c wants to send data to d how much will be the transmission power required for data transmission from c to d so that calculation bs can always do because bs knows the relative position between all the nodes mobile hosts within the area so this last line is very important and this question is asked that in ad hoc mode of hwn there is no use of bs explain so you have to say that uh, bs is not used for data communication directly because in this case uh, through route request through route reply packet through data transmission all the nodes abcd are talking to each other data transmission is happening bs is not having any role to play in data transmission here but there is something called as station keeping there is something called as keeping the network intact because this is a ad hoc network and which is highly dynamic all these nodes abcd they are highly dynamic okay so now abcd all are there in one side there is no problem in the data transmission but suddenly if a starts moving in one direction d starts moving in other direction c starts moving in one direction then who is going to tell all these nodes about their relative position and how to keep the network link intact between a b c d so that work actually is done by base station by power measurement so this thing is very important here bs periodically check the topology and broadcast the minimum power required to keep the network connected so even if a b c d are going in different directions then also base station will keep track of all these nodes and base station will tell all these nodes that okay now a has gone little up b has gone little down c is towards left d is towards right and uh, the distance is increased so you have to increase your transmission power to be connected so all these instructions are continuously being sent from base station to the other nodes so base station in this case is mainly for uh, the word is station keeping it is not taking part directly into data communication but it is actually doing the station keeping part so this last line is very important here the base station periodically check the topology that means whether the link is connected or not all the links okay so not only for abcd but for all uh, transmission receiving pair uh, bs checks the topology and broadcasting the minimum power required to keep the network connected so it keeps on checking the network topology and if it finds that two closed nodes have gone little far then it tells both the nodes if you want to uh, contact with the previous node 
or with your friend node, then you should be sending transmission power a little more. Okay, because now you have become distant with your previous neighbor. Now, if you want to communicate with them, you have to transmit a little more power. So the relative transmission power between every node is calculated by the base station and updated in the table of every node. So this is actually hybrid wireless network architecture. You have to draw these two diagrams. First, you have to explain what is meant by cellular mode. It is actually, in this case, BS is working like a relay. A wants to send message to C. A has to send it to BS. BS will relate to C. In the second case, which is called as ad hoc mode, in this case, there is no direct inclusion of VS in the data communication path. Okay, so if A wants to send data to D, first A sends a request. D, upon receiving the request, sends a reply back. It comes to A, and upon receiving the acknowledgement from D, A now transmits the data, which follows the same route request path previously. Okay, so this is actually what is uh, the second type that is ad hoc type. But what is the use of BS in this case? So BS is having radius capital R. BS can send data or can sense data or receive data from any position within the circuit. Hence, BS does what? BS actually do the station keeping part. It uh, at every time updates the table of uh, every node and it tells all the nodes that if you are having this much intermediate distance, then you should be transmitting this much power to communicate with the neighbor node so this is a very important part which is called the station keeping here there are four things one is called as dotted line route request one is called as dot, dashed and dotted line it is called as route reply okay here capital r is the cell radius and smaller is the data communication range and smaller is always less than capital r what is meant by switching algorithm in uh, bs because it has to switch between two different modes so if the bs is in cellular mode then the bs estimates the expected output in the ad hoc mode by uh, simulating a packet scheduling algorithm so not every time it will be working in the ad hoc mode not every time the bs will be working in the uh, cellular mode so always there will be optimization so if the bs is working in a cellular mode then the bs estimates the expected output in the ad hoc mode by simulating a packet scheduling algorithm. So there is a simulation okay, parallelly going on. The output is compared with the actual output achieved in the cellular mode. So suppose initially a cellular mode kind of uh, communication is going on. Uh, that is one node wants to send data to another node. Okay. So there can be either ad hoc mode, there can be cellular mode of communication. But what base station does is base station is carrying out cellular mode, but it continuously uh, uh, calculates what if uh, A and C is connected by ad hoc. So if the post, there is an intermediate node here, we just assume that. So A is now communicating with C with uh, uh, cellular mode, but with the same time, BS knows that BS knows that there is an intermediate node B in between. And if A, B, C is connected, if A does not take the help of BS, if A connects to C via B, which you have to assume in between A and C, then how much will be the communication power required? Okay. So this uh, kind of calculation continuously going on. So here, uh, A to BS and BS to C, there are two long communication link. But here, if A, B, and C, there are two short communication link. So in that case, communication power saving will be there. Hence, the BS will tell A that you don't use ad hoc, uh, you don't use uh, cellular mode. You go for ad hoc mode and take the help of <clears throat> intermediate node B and relay your packet to C via B. So always there is a power saving kind of a thing that happens. So in that case, the switching happens. Switching happens between cellular mode to ad hoc mode. This is what is explained here. That is, this output is compared with the actual output achieved in the cellular mode to decide in which mode to operate. In the ad hoc mode, the base station compares the output achieved in the ad hoc mode with bandwidth divided by 2n, okay, the average bandwidth available per user. Okay. Uh, to find out which mode the topology is best, uh, continuously there will be a comparison going on between cellular mode and ad hoc mode because source and destinations are constant. Either uh, whenever it is working in cellular mode, it will be using um, the base station as a, a reflector Okay, so base station as a repeater. Okay, in that case, a long communication links will be formed. Power wastage will be more. But if uh, a node is using uh, local uh, small nodes, 
uh, and avoiding using BS in that case with less amount of power, the communication can be completed. Okay, that is actually the ad hoc mode. So this com uh, comparison is done first and then the switching occurs. If it is found that uh, nodes are very far off, uh, in that case, obviously the cellular mode will be better. Okay. If the nodes are very close by, then ad hoc mode will be better. So from power point of view, every time there is a uh, decision taken, there's a comparison going on. And after the decision taken, switching occurs. So switching between cellular mode to ad hoc mode, that occurs. Okay. So studies show that HWN architecture performs better than the current generation packet networks based on single hop uh, architecture. So SCN is there, which is called a single hop cellular network. So HWN works better than SCN. Algorithm operates at the BS, which uses the network topology. So GPS provided location information is there at every uh, BS at every node. So an algorithm operates at the BS, which uses the network topology to reduce, to decide in which mode the cell should operate to maximize the output. The decision is broadcast uh, uh, to the all nodes. Okay. So it is not only uh, base station or nodes who are calculating uh, the uh, which modality will be best. Okay. But they are taking the help of something which is called GPS, who is looking at the things from the top. So if you are a part of the network, you might not know that uh, the sender and receiver node are very close by. But uh, BS is taking all these decisions from GPS, okay, which is looking at the network from very top. And the GPS based decision is uh, processed by the base station and base station is sending it to all the nodes. So depending on the uh, sender and receiver position, GPS based tracking, GPS based uh, decision making is being taken uh, by the base station and it is relaying the other nodes that thing that you use either uh, cellular mode or you use uh, the ad hoc mode, whichever will be better. So it is very important. Okay, so an algorithm operates at the BS which uses the network topology and GPS provides the location information. Then it is decided in which mode the cell should operate to maximize the output and to save the communication power. So saving communication power is also maximizing, maximizing the output. Okay. And this decision is broadcast to all the nodes. So after it is decided that which mode is suitable uh, most under current scenario, which uh, mode will give highest power saving, then this uh, decision is uh, sent to all the nodes within the network. Apart from throughput, apart from output, output means how much maximum packet is uh, dispatched from the sender to the receiver. That is actually the measure of output or throughput in a network. So apart from output, so it is not only the output, but battery power consumed and fairness also have to be found for improved HWN architecture. So uh, fairness means some nodes are there that wants to transmit packet, but it is not getting channel. Okay, uh, a channel contention, it is not getting, uh, it is not winning the fight, but it is having a lot of data to transmit. Okay, so the base station has to ensure that every node, uh, sender node is given chance so that it can transmit packet. Okay, that fairness has to be ensured. And secondly, uh, the battery power uh, consumption should be as less as possible. Because if battery power consumption is less, node life will be more. In that case, the network life will be more. So three things are very important in this case. First one is maximize the output. That is maximum number of data packet will be transmitted from the transmitted to the receiver. So throughput is maximum. Second is power consumption is minimum. So that's why there is switching happening. Okay. So every time uh, the base station and other nodes, so it's a collaborative decision making kind of thing. Base station and other nodes will continuously be checking its own position by means of GPS and they will decide whether uh, cellular mode is best or ad hoc mode is best. Best means which mode is uh, giving maximum output, which node will be uh, having lesser uh, link distance and which node will be having more power saving. Okay. So these are continuously being calculated by the uh, system. And the third thing, it is not only the uh, packet transmitted output, but uh, the battery power consumed should be as less as possible and the fairness of communication. That means all nodes should be getting chance to communicate data. Okay. That also uh, has to be improved by using HWN architecture. So it's a very important question, HWN architecture, please prepare that. Third architecture is called as Soprano. Okay. So every time a scenario is defined and Soprano, the full form is 
you can check here sop ra you know self organizing packet radio ad hoc network with overlay so sop ra you know it is given here self organizing packet radio ad hoc network with overlay so it's a wireless multi hop network overlaid on a cellular network so two things are uh, mixed one is over wireless multi hop network and second one is uh, cellular structure these two things are mixed what is the advantage of uh, soprano so this is a slotted packet cdma which is called as code division multiple access system with dedicated relay station also known as router so in this diagram r3 r4 r5 r6 so all this uh, dark dots they are actually the router or relay stations okay and mobile hosts are there given by like mobile phone so c uh, a okay b they are actually the mobile hosts who are generating the data so we are speaking to the uh, mobile hosts so we are speaking to a we are speaking to b we are speaking to c okay and this data has to be taken to the base station so when a is uh, generating the voice data and that has to be taken to the base station by this r1 so r1 is a intermediate or relay station and this is a communication link and a is sending the data to bs1 okay so this is actually called as whenever a is sending data to the base station this is actually called as uplink okay so whenever base station is sending data to any mobile host this is called as a downlink and whenever any mobile host is sending data to base station this is called as uplink so b to base station through repeater r2 it is a uplink a to base station through repeater r1 is called as a uplink okay but we are finding that uh, there is no uplink between bs1 and c because from bs1 the data is coming to c okay so b to bs1 there is uplink downlink both you can check here this is a bidirectional kind of a thing they have shown a to uh, bs1 this is only uplink okay because a is uh, uploading data to the base station through the intermediate node r1 okay there is uh, no uplink between c and uh, bs1 because the data if you can say is flowing from bs1 to c so it is all downlink where r3 and r4 intermediate nodes are involved okay this is the scenario there are two cells shown okay the cell 1 is actually guided by bs1 base station 1 and cell 2 is guided by bs2 or controlled by bs2 or base station 2 and there is a special line between bs1 and bs2 that we have to remember so if bs1 wants to talk to bs2 it will not be doing through the intermediate node bs1 can directly talk to bs2 or bs2 can directly talk to bs1 and there is uninterrupted so that's a kind of a hotline okay so there are two ways of sending data uh, to uplink and downlink okay so let's see what is the problem problem is a wants to talk to c okay and a wants to listen from c or b wants to talk to c and b wants to listen from c what are the two ways it can happen okay that is actually will explain explain what is soprano so what is the problem now what we are seeing b wants to uh, talk to c b wants to talk to c that means from b is the sender c will be the receiver and c will be the sender and b will be the receiver this has to happen okay now here soprano architecture is coming into picture and here soprano architecture uh we are not finding ad hoc type of communication because b is not transmitting data through the intermediate mobile host to c no it is not happening b will be sending uh, information to the uh, relay or router station so b wants to talk to c now we are entering what is meant by soprano what is the agenda b wants to talk to c okay now this bs2 also is having some part to play that is a very interesting thing because bs2 is not there close to c or b1 okay b but then also bs2 may be involved in communication between c to b let's see how it happens okay so b is uplinking with bs1 so b is sending data to bs1 uh, which data the data that b wants to send to c okay so this is called uplink b is talking to base station 1 now what base station 1 is doing base station 1 is relaying uh, the same data which it has taken from b to the uh, link c okay so to the mobile host c okay so now b is a bidirectional thing so b is talking to intermediate node r2 relay station 
R2 is sending the data to base station. Base station is sending the same data to C by means of R3 and R4. I think this case is understood. So Soprano can employ dynamic load balancing uh, as shown as uh, in this diagram. The downlink to the node C is BS1, R3, R4, and C. Okay, so B is uh, to BS1, this is the uplink, and BS1, R3, R4, C, this is actually the through the same path gives rise to increased interference. So C to BS1 is not possible, let's say, because there is some problem in R3 and R4. So R3 and R4 can take data only in the downlink side, but R3 and R4 is saying we will not take data from C and take it to BS1. We cannot do it. Then what happens? But what I said, B and C wants to talk. Okay, B wants to B and C wants to exchange data. So B is first uploading the data to BS1 by means of R2. Then BS1 by means of R3 and R4 sends the data to C. C understands that yes, B has sent me data. Now C wants to send some data to B, but this R3 and R4, they are saying what? We are not going to take data backward. We are not going to take uplink from the mobile host C. This is a problem. Then what will happen? C can upload or uplink the data to BS2 by means of R5 and R6. So this is a solution. The upstream path now is C, R5, R6, and BS2. Why? Because R3 and R4 ignores the uplinking between C to BS1. Hence, C has to find a different path. And C is not staying within his own cell. C is shifting cell. And C is trying to find out another uh, BS2, that is a base station 2, which is there in another cell. So C has received data from B because B has uplinked with BS1. BS1 has downlinked to C through R3 and R4. But R3 and R4 is ig ignoring uh, C now. So it has delivered the packet, but it is saying that we are not going to take the packet back or data back. Then C does what? C now communicates with BS2 uplinking through R5 and R6. So whatever message C wants to give to B, that message C gives to BS2. And BS2 will talk to BS1 directly by means of a hotline that I told you that BS1 and BS2. So they are like uh, the talk between two chief ministers. Okay, so that is by hotline. So the C, as it is not able to communicate directly with BS1 because R3 and R4 ignoring, then C uploads the data to BS2. And BS2 takes the C data directly to base station, BS1, and BS1 and B, they are connected. So through BS1, through downlink R2, B will be receiving the data of C. This is the very important concept of Soprano and which is actually called as load balancing. So finally, again, I'll tell you, B wants to talk to C. So B uploads the data to BS1 by means of R2. BS1 sends the data to C, downlink R3 and R4, but R3 and R4 ignores to take the data from C and uplink it to BS1. Then by Soprano protocol, Soprano architecture, C finds a separate path. C now contacts head of another uh, circle, which is beside it. So through R5 and R6 intermediate node, C now uplinks the data to BS2. And BS2 and BS1, they are having hot channel, hot line. Okay. So now the C data captured by BS2 uplinked uh, through R5, R6 will be directly transmitted from BS2 to BS1. And BS1 and B is having a downlink through R2. So the data of C is not going to be directly via R4, R3, BS1 or R2. No. The data for C to B, it goes from C to R5, R6, BS2, then to BS1 and then to the mobile host B. This is actually Soprano architecture. So this is called load balancing through BS2 when BS1 is heavily loaded. So why it is not happening? Because R3 and R4, if it takes the data back from C to BS1, it will be again loading BS1. So that's why R3 and R4 are saying we cannot load BS1. Instead, you use a different base station. Okay, And BS2 to BS1, yes, that's a hotline. So that data will be having highest amount of uh, priority. Okay. At that time, the loading will be little less. Soprano architecture, the repeaters are not expected to generate traffic on their own. 
rather they help forward the traffic originated by the mobile hosts so mobile host and repeater the difference is mobile host that is abc in this diagram abc okay they will be generating the voice data but all these dark dots they are repeaters they are not generating data they are just forwarding data so in soprano also the same thing happens the mobile hosts are generating data and relay nodes are forwarding data neighbor discovery in soprano architecture is done on powering up the mobile host by receiving the carrier signal from the nearest repeater a registration process by which a node updates its location makes it easy to find a node in the cell soprano assumes that asynchronous cdma with large number of spreading sequence so this is the features of soprano what they are saying okay so in this case what happens is a channel assignment process is used to inform every node about the channel to be used by the node Soprano aims at providing high data rate internet access by using inexpensive relay stations. So whatever relay stations is shown intermediate, they are not very expensive. Okay, but they are uh, carrying huge amount of data. Two separate frequency bands are assumed to carry the information. One is uplink, one is downlink. So one is upstream and one is downstream. Upstream means uh, mobile host to the base station, and downstream means base station to the mobile host. So there are two uh, different uh, frequencies and whenever there are two different frequencies at that time overhead increases okay so uplink and downlink upstream and downstream the upstream and downstream may include repeaters which operate in tdd scheme okay so this is called time division duplex now you can check that this b2 bs1 this is tdd okay this is time division duplex but this bs1 to c this is not tdd this is tds so this is time division simplex simplex means one direction TDD means time division duplex. So that is a problem. P2, uh, BS1, this is duplex. But BS1 to say this is simplex. So it is said here the upstream and downstream may include repeaters which operate in TDD scheme, wherein the time divided into slots and every slot is shared by nodes and relay stations by the CDMA. Mobile hosts are assigned one channel while routers are expected to operate in all the channels as per the BSS decision. So this is a topology issue. The mode of operation is decided by the base station during the call setup or path setup phase. Scheduling of the transmission slots on a path is done such that the system capacity is maximized and at the same time reduction in interference is achieved. Synchronization is a very important thing. So synchronization of the entire network is a must to achieve a collision free TDD system. So time division duplex. So to avoid collision only the C did not send data back to BS1. Instead, C found a different path to BS2. BS2 then communicated with BS1 and BS1 gave the data to B. Because B to BS1 is a duplex path, but BS1 to C, C to BS2, they are all simplex path. Last line, two routing strategies were proposed for this architecture, namely minimum path loss MPL and minimum path loss with forward progress MFP. So those are the names we should know. But we are not going to check uh, the uh, architecture for soprano only soprano architecture so this diagram and the problem that is b wants to send to c and c cannot send data back to bs1 hence c is finding path for bs2 bs2 is communicating to bs1 and that is communicating to b this is the thing you have to explain there's a solution you have to explain in detail next is open issues in next generation hybrid architecture